Well, joining me now, Molly Hemingway, senior editor of The Federalist and founder and CEO of American Majority, Ned Ryan. Good to see you both. Thanks, uh, David. Ned, first of all, I, I don't like playing the blame game when something right. tragic uh, happens, like what happened in Charlottesville. However, the Wall Street Journal editorial page had what I think is a terrific editorial kind of talking about one of the things that have led us to things like what happened in Charlottesville. It's called the poison of identity politics. And what that means, according to them, in practice, this means allocating political power, contracts, jobs, and now even salaries in the private sector based on the politics of skin color or gender rather than merit or performance. It goes on to say a politics fixated on indelible differences will inevitably, right. inevitably lead to resentments that extremists can exploit in ugly ways on the right and the left, to which you say what? No, I, I would exactly agree. We're, we're look, it seems we're looking for more differences than we are for, for commonality right, right now. For people to score political points, for them to, dare I say, with some channels get TV ratings, for some people to get more readership, to really throw fuel onto these differences. In fact, we should be looking for common ground because at the end of the day, we're all Americans. I think the thing that is, again, frustrating me, but again, I'm not shocked, David, at the total hypocrisy being displayed, we should reject white supremacists. We should reject the KKK and the alt-right. We should also be rejecting Antifa and Black Lives right. Matters for their violence and their violent Which rhetoric. Which is something we should mention that uh, Governor Terry McAuliffe on Saturday Four times. Did, did not do. He did not focus on the violence coming from the left of the political spectrum, and yet he received uh, no criticism whatsoever. And uh, Molly, what... What I see, though, in this, in this, as they say, poison of identity politics in the Wall Street Journal, is a clash, a genuine clash of cultures between the culture of the Obama administration, which did the identity politics, with this new culture, which is trying, as Ned was saying, to, to get the obsessions on differences away from us. Well, there really are quite a few similarities between both the hard left and the hard right when it comes to things like identity politics. They approach it slightly differently, but they're both based in I identity agree. politics, which is deeply un-American. They also try and legitimize violence against political opponents. They try to silence political opponents. And these are problems that you're seeing on the fringes of American political thought. It's not a large percentage of the American population, and people should keep that in perspective, that in fact the vast majority of Americans do know how to engage with each other and disagree with each other peacefully peacefully and amicably, but this is something to be on guard against on both left and right. And we have seen a lot of violent protests throughout the country in recent years uh, from Antifa, but now you're also seeing it from the right and this horrible killing of this woman, Heather Heyer, as well as the mowing down of, you know, dozens of other people. A lot of people are still injured. This is not a good turn to see this continuation of violence. No. And, and Ned, I think Molly makes a terrific point. I've been talking about this for decades, literally my own life, where there does reach a point when the far left and the far right converge. That's right. Uh, in fact, Let's face it, Nash, uh, Nazi means national socialism. It's, Fascism. it's got socialism in the name. That's right. No, I mean, the, the, iron, the great irony with some of this is Antifa, it stands for anti-fascists, are actually fascists in their behavior. You look at some of the stuff that's taking place on the right, again, they kind of embrace some of that fascist behavior, and you realize, like you said, far right, far left are coming together because they're actually very similar. As Molly said, they're un-American in how they approach their, the, the world and how they yeah. approach expressing their views. And quite frankly... You know, when you look at how they want to settle their political differences, it's not as a civilized and enlightened people. It's by physical intimidation and violence and destruction of personal property. And again, I would repeat, they're to re be rejected whether they're on the right or the left. They're to be rejected. They represent a very small percentage. And again, I would say to those, if we want to have a rational dialogue and have a discussion about what we have in common, we have to shut yeah. those voices out, and we also have to ignore those voices that are trying to highlight I mean, these differences. Molly, we only have 15 seconds. Sorry to do this to you, but it, with all of the noise coming out on, on what happened, uh, will the agenda be held up, the Trump agenda of cutting taxes in particular, quickly? It shouldn't be an excuse to hold the agenda up, and Americans should come together in unity as neighbors, yeah. but politicians need to keep working on what they need to do. You know, the irony is we have been coming together on an individual basis all over the country for years, and this identity politics takes us in the opposite direction. 